Our current situation is grim. Over the past 24 hours, we have identified 1,155 new cases of COVID-19 and have completed over 17,000 tests. This means our provincial positivity rate sits at about 6.5%, and we currently have 10,655 active cases. There are 310 people in hospital. Of those, 58 are in ICU. Sadly, I must report 11 new deaths over the past 24 hours. 11 fellow Albertans are gone, and their families and friends are mourning their loss. They and everyone else who has lost a loved one recently must navigate the experience without many of the ways we normally comfort one another. I encourage all of us to reach out to anyone we know who is grieving a loss to let them know that they are not alone. I continue to be concerned about the rise in these tragic outcomes of COVID-19. Severe outcomes are not limited just to those already at the very end of their lives, and it is a mistake to think so. This week, two individuals in their 30s died as a result of this virus. While both had comorbidities, these were not on their own life-threatening. The average age of people experiencing hospitalization is dropping. And about one in four people who need hospital care for COVID-19 and one out of every six in ICU with COVID-19 have no pre-existing medical conditions. It is also important to remember that having a chronic medical condition is very common. These conditions include things like high blood pressure and diabetes. In Alberta, almost one quarter of all adults over the age of 20 have a chronic condition. That is almost 800,000 people. 10% have two conditions and 8% have three or more. Older adults are more likely to have medical conditions. For example, of those over age 50, 65% have one or more chronic conditions. When looking just at men in Alberta, more than half of men over 50 and almost 70% of men over 65 have high blood pressure. That should not be a death sentence. Most Albertans will have a family member or friend with these conditions. We must remember that our actions protect these people as well as ourselves. With rising hospitalizations and ICU admissions, combined with ongoing outbreaks at multiple acute care and continuing care facilities across the province, AHS is working to increase capacity for COVID-19 patients if needed. Throughout the pandemic response, I've indicated 70 general ICU beds have been planned for patients who test positive for COVID-19. On Wednesday, I said that 81% of these beds were occupied, and I've heard that my use of this number is causing greater anxiety as Albertans see us getting closer to that threshold. Let me be clear, Alberta Health Services manages ICU beds and staff depending on demand from both COVID-19 patients and patients with other conditions that require intensive care. There are 173 general adult ICU beds for this purpose. These beds can be used for many patient types. I want to assure Albertans that as more COVID-19 patients require intensive care, AHS is able to add additional intensive care capacity. AHS has already readied additional ICU beds in Edmonton zone and additional ICU spaces in Calgary zone will be ready if needed. This is where most of the capacity is likely to be required, but creating this capacity means stopping or delaying other services, and this is the impact we want to avoid. Demand for COVID-19 is still high and the system is taxed. I continue to urge Albertans to help us reduce demand on our ICUs and on our hospitals by following all measures in place. The best way to ensure capacity is available and to drive hospitalizations down is to reduce community transmission, which in turn will reduce the need for additional COVID-19 beds. Turning to schools, there are currently active alerts or outbreaks in 294 schools or about 12% of all schools in Alberta. This number includes 67 schools that are currently on the watch list. 
So far, in-school transmission has likely occurred in 166 schools. Of these, about 87 had only one new case as a result. Schools do not operate in a closed system. Students, guardians, teachers, parents and staff are part of our communities. As we continue to have increasing cases throughout Alberta, this will correlate with cases in our institutions, including school and hospital. In the past week, we have confirmed more new active cases than we have in any previous week to date. Contact tracers are working heroically to address the backlog, but with the current volume, they're fighting an uphill battle. There are still more people and more cases out there that we don't know about. We must all continue to do our part to help the contact tracers. If you test positive for COVID-19, follow the directions that you were given. If you were asked to visit the AHS online portal, please submit the information for your known close contacts. I know many worried about being blamed or stigmatized, and I want to stress that this process is anonymous. When your close contacts receive a text, they will, not, they will be told to isolate and be given information on symptoms, isolating and testing. But I want to be clear they are not given your name. On the other side, if you receive one of these text messages that indicates you were a close contact, follow the instructions you were given. You must stay home and isolate for 14 days from your last contact with a positive case. Monitor for symptoms and arrange for testing if needed. Otherwise, do not leave your property. And please respond back to the text message so contact tracers can determine what additional follow-up may be required. Finally, if you are an event organizer and are asked to notify attendees, please do so as soon as possible. As I said Wednesday, many recently diagnosed COVID-19 cases have had no known source of exposure. Over the past seven days, this number has become larger as contact tracers have faced additional challenges to keep up with the demand. Our actions, such as going out while symptomatic, have very real consequences to those around us, whether we know about it or not. I often ask Albertans to follow public health measures to protect their loved ones. It is easy to think of a cherished family member or friend, but I want to remind everyone that the health of those we don't know is just as important. Every time COVID spreads, it is a threat to our health, the health of others and our health care system. Every spreading event jeopardizes businesses and activities that could potentially face more intrusive measures than those we introduced last week. This weekend, I encourage everyone to abide by all public health measures, even if you don't like them, even if they're inconvenient, or even if you don't agree with them. We must all do our part to bend the curve, prevent the healthcare system from being overwhelmed, and prevent more restrictive measures from coming into effect. I will say that it uh, has been challenging to uh, consider what the right balance is and, and what that right suite of measures would be to be able to bring down COVID-19 while uh, maintaining the mental health uh, benefits of uh, the activity and socialization, the benefits of being employed, the benefits of uh, being able to have physical activity. Uh, and so those are some of the considerations that I've taken into account as I've made my recommendations and also wanted to be able to give as much opportunity as possible to try to control the pandemic with a uh, suite of measures that had the minimum impacts on people's health in other ways. Uh, of course, I am concerned and the measures that we have put in place over the past several months may have somewhat slowed the growth, but they have not bent the curve as much as we need to. Uh, and we do need everyone to pull together to follow all of those measures to the letter, uh, or unfortunately, we will need to put in additional restrictions. I will need to make recommendations on additional restrictions. Uh, and I recognize those may have other health impacts, uh, but we cannot let COVID-19 spread unchecked.